But that alone should have earned anarchism, the reputation, the same reputation as Nazism historically. But let me actually explain to you, before we do that, the final nail into the coffin of historical anarchism. Because on the one hand, you have fascism in Italy and Germany, which by its lineage comes from syndicalism, from Italy and then the influence from the Italians onto the Germans and their fascist corporatism, yada, yada, yada. Culmination of anarchism. You also have what's going on in Spain. And what about Spain? Spain, Spain, Spain. The final nail in the coffin of the so-called patriarchal tradition of anarchism. Now, after Spain, I want to make it clear. Any patriarchal tradition of anarchism dies. It's over. There's no anarchism. It's not a real fucking thing. It's not like Marxism-Leninism that has an actual reality in China and Cuba. and else. It's, it's just some stupid bullshit completely made up. Not a real tradition after Spain. But it culminates in Spain. I'm going to actually explain to you why that is. So in the formation of the first international working men's association in the 19th century, Bakunin and his faction basically established an anarchist tradition in Spain. And this basically reached its zenith, its culmination in the CNTFAI, the Anarcho-Syndicalists Spain. And it was a pretty big movement among the lumpen scum and also among the privileged proletarian, urban proletariat of Spain's cities, where it reached its zenith. When Franco couped the Spanish government uh, in 36, it began, there began a Spanish civil war. And the reason why anarchists are considered fellow leftists is because they fought alongside the Communist and Popular Front government for a time uh, against Franco. So for once in history, the anarchists were fighting fascists instead of joining them like they did in Italy and like they did in Germany. So this is what has given rise to the impression that anarchism is anti-fascist. It's because of Spain. But actually, the reason why the syndicalists were opposing Franco was entirely different from the reason why the Popular Front was opposing Franco. The anarchists didn't like the way in which Frank, Franco was drawing from some pe backward peasants in the countryside, reactionary ones, and disprivileging the role of the Spanish city. So the anarchists, alongside the Trotskyists, were trying to preserve the tyranny of the town over the country, which Franco was also doing inadvertently. It's just that Franco was forced to make compromises here, right? So this is the origin of the anarchist resistance against Franco, more or less. It's not that the anarchists were particularly engaged in any kind of anti-fascist revolution. They didn't care about Franco. They were more so concerned about... It was basically the syndicalists versus... The anarcho-syndicalists versus the Spanish fascists. The Falange, right? That was an inter-fascist civil war, right? Communists have fought each other, the Sino-Soviet split, and elsewhere. So this was also an inter-fascist dispute between the syndicalists and the phalangists. Both pretty much had the same class background and subjective stance and, you know, attitude and, and, and aesthetic and whatever. It's, it's very similar beliefs as well. It's just that the anarchists had been engaged in this attempt to carry out a revolution syndicalist revolution and overthrow of uh, the Spanish state and they didn't really see a distinction between Franco and the popular front democratic Spain whatever uh, they didn't see a distinction between those beyond the, the temporary alliance they saw them as the same thing pretty much right so that's something important to keep in mind they pretty much saw them uh, as the same thing so there's a bit, yeah, there's a big myth that the, the anarchists were part of the anti-fascist resistance. They weren't. Their beef with Franco and their beef with the um, Falange was an inter-anarchist, inter inter-fascist dispute. Now, Franco wasn't really an anarchist. He wasn't even, I don't know if he was a full-on fascist like Mussolini was. You call him one, I guess. He was a military dictator, right? 
But he wasn't a phalangist, and the phalange was the, like, Spanish fascist, right? So Mussolini, sorry, Frank, I don't know if I'd call him an anarchist, but the phalange were anarchists, right? So phalange versus the syndicalists is a, it's a civil war, basically, but people who subscribe to pretty much the same ideology. I'm going to skip a lot of shit, but I just want to give you this crucial fucking comment. It's disgusting. It's fucking disgusting. So the Popular Front made so much concessions to these anarchists, these syndicalists, right? They made so much concessions to them. But eventually, communists were becoming increasingly prominent in that Popular Front government. That Popular Front in general. Communists were starting to become very prominent. And there was a few people who didn't like this. Now, who were, who were the people that were upset by the rise in popularity of the communists in the Popular Front government? Liberals, Freemasons, right? Freemason, liberal, globalist, you know, scary whatevers. And anarchists. The CNT, alongside these liberals like Casado, together conspired to hatch a plan to coup the Popular Front government of um, Edrin, I forgot his name, Negrin, whatever his name is, to coup that government in order to stop the communist threat. Now, what did they both have in common? Both represented the urban, lumpen, and financial capitalist class globally and the bourgeoisie, yada, yada, yada. They both represented this. And the communist prominence in the Popular Front government was increasingly allowing it to become actually popular, empowering the Spanish peasant, the Spanish popular majority. The urbanoids didn't fucking like that. So they cooed the Popular Front government in 1939 in order to negotiate terms of peace and surrender with Franco. These anarchist pieces of shit thought that Stalinism was more of a threat than Franco. They literally cooed the Popular Front government in a fascist coup, a fascist coup no different from Mussolini's March on Rome, no different from the, the fascist coup in, in, in Germany in terms of just this naked overthrow of a fucking democratic government in order to make peace with Franco, which failed, by the way, let me tell you the truth. Just for that alone, and that, that ended the anarchist tradition. That, that's, that was the final nail in the coffin to anarchism as a tradition. It was done after that. But that alone should have earned anarchism the reputation, the same reputation as Nazism, historically. We should have spit in these fucking people's faces. We should have considered them our enemies. We should have Same thing as neo-Nazis. Same exact fucking thing. They should have been disgraced forever. I mean, the October Revolution already did that. Because these scum tried to destroy the early Soviet Republic and opposed the proletariat of the Soviet Union and the democratic dictatorship of the proletariat and the peasantry as these wreckers and saboteurs working on behalf of the Western imperialists to undermine the Soviet Union. But if that wasn't enough, and if it wasn't enough that they joined the ranks of Mussolini and the fascist party in Italy, if all of that wasn't enough... They cooed the Popular Front government and opened the doors for Franco. That should have killed the whole thing. Why didn't it? Why didn't it? 